Epidemiology is defined as the study of distribution and determinants of health-related states and application of that knowledge for prevention of illnesses and promotion of health conditions. As you can see from this definition, there are um, three or four major issues that are important for epidemiology. The first one of is this that epidemiology is a study of distribution of health related states and illnesses and diseases in populations. The second is this that epidemiology is a study of determinants of health related states. So there is a uh, component of some exposure or some other factors that can cause certain health related states that are involved. And a third thing, which is quite important for epidemiology, is the application of this knowledge for prevention of illnesses and promotion of health. Now, the thing that I have not re really written here is this, that a more formal definition of epidemiology uh, involves um, all of these things in the context of populations. So it's not just one person's health, but it is about populations. And from those population-based studies, we infer the uh, possibilities of, um, it, it, you know, how it, how it is going to play out for one person. So let's take a look at some of the issues that are on the measurement of the distribution of diseases. Now, in, the, in studying the measurement of the distribution of diseases, we talk typically in terms of prevalence and incidence and standardized rates. Prevalence, in turn, are of two types. Either it can be a point prevalence or it can be period prevalence. And prevalence refers to the fact that, and prevalence refers to the probability of a disease that occurs in a base population. For example, when we talk about prevalence of lung cancer in New Zealand, we talk typically for all people in, in New Zealand, what is the probability of the occurrence of lung cancer? So we tally the number of people who have got lung cancer in a specific sample of the population and then find out the percentages or the, or, um, or, or the proportion of people who have got lung cancer. Incidence has, again, a couple of uh, types. One is incidence density rate. The other is cumulative incidence. And incidence is the measure of disease occurrence or the disease distribution where um, how many new cases occur in a base population or in a susceptible population provided that these people are disease free to start with. Standardized rates refer to the or ratios actually refer to the situation where we compare two or more populations or the same population across two periods of time and see and, and study and test what are um, what how can the numbers differ and we'll see examples of each one of them in the in due course. So as we have um, as we were no, as as we noted previously, prevalence and incidence uh, essentially are about distribution of illnesses, and the assumptions is this that the are these that distribution of illnesses can vary, and that variation depends on the persons involved and uh, across different places, across time, etc. So uh, to repeat, prevalence of a disease refers to the probability of disease occurrence or the proportion of people uh, out of all people who could have suffered from the particular disease um, that have the disease in question. Incidence, on the other hand, provides an indication of the instantaneous likelihood of disease occurrence. What this means is this, that among all people who are disease free, what is the likelihood that they will become ill over the next um, period of time, say the period of time is assigned a value like T, maybe a year or two years. And what is the likelihood or what is the, what is the chance that these people will fall ill as well? And under steady state conditions, you can calculate or estimate that prevalence of a disease is equal to incidence times the duration of the disease. So uh, to moving on, as we have seen that prevalence refers to the total number of individuals with a particular disease condition X. It is a disease condition, but it can also be a health condition X. For example, hypertension, obesity, um, cancer, um, other kind, kind of conditions. Among all people, and then you multiply that with the base population. So if you're talking in terms of percentages, then we take uh, 100 as our base population. 
in this particular example you can see that 10,000 is um, used, used as a base population. X refers to the number of people with the particular health condition or the disease. Y refers to the total number of people and 10,000 refers to the base population that we would like to compare. As we noted before, there are a couple of uh, types of prevalences, period and point prevalence. Period prevalence refers to the total number of, uh, you know, total population over a period of time. And point, of course, refers to the total number of cases at a particular point in time. And in each circumstance, in each case, the susceptible population, the population on which those cases arise, uh, that is um, taken as the de denominator of for calculation. So here is a little bit more uh, detailed um, explanation of how do we calculate or estimate prevalence and incidences. In this diagram, you can see that there are three bar plots. The leftmost bar plot, which is around here, provides you with, um, you know, what had happened with year zero, which means that people started uh, observing people at this point, investigators started observing people at this point, and 1,000 people who were disease-free, they were followed up for two years. So you can see year zero, year one, and year two. At the end of year one, out of 1,000 people, 100 people um, ended up with a, uh, with 100 new cases of a particular disease emerged and therefore that left 900 people disease free. Therefore, in terms of incidence, this would mean that in one year, 100 out of 1000 people you know, developed a new disease, therefore the incidence was 10% per year. So 100 over 1000 is 10% per year. And then in the second year, we see that out of the 900 people who, um, who were disease-free to start with, in year two, we got 90 new cases occurring. So 90 over 900, once more, it is 10% um, per year. Because again, in second year, we get to see that 90 over 900 is 10%. So um, only incidence-wise, we could say that the incidence remained unchanged from year one to year two at 10% per year. The prevalence, however, changed because at in the beginning, um, you know, at the end of two years, if you were to find out the prevalence, we would see that 190 cases accumulated over two years on those 1,000 people. So it, the prevalence is 190 over 1,000, so 19%. Now there is another concept which is known as incidence density which means that um, we followed 1,000 people for two years, so that constituted 2,000 person years. So it's like one person followed for two years would be two person years. So 1,000 people followed for two years would be 2,000 person years, and in these 2,000 person years, we got 190 cases of, um, of, of this. So the incidence density rate would be something like 9.5% or 9.5 per 100 person years. And you can see that not, that 9.5 times 2, which is the duration of the disease, is equal to prevalence as we iterated last in the previous slide. That is, um, prevalence is equal to um, incidence times the duration of the disease. So this is how we calculate and estimate prevalence and incidence um, of diseases. Now, um, Therefore, to repeat once more, measurement of incidence is about number of new cases N of a disease occurring over a period of time T among the susceptible population P. The formula given is N over P times T, where N is the number of new cases, P is the number of people, and T is the time period over which the observations were made. And we have already uh, discussed the concept of person time, but once more to repeat this. The denominator is defined in terms of person year. So one person followed for one year will equal one person year. Okay. So one person year refers to one person followed for one year. Incidence density refers to the total number of new cases of a disease. The denominator in this particular case for incidence density estimation is that of person years. We have also discussed cumulative incidence. For example, 1,000 people followed for two years would be, um, would be um, you know, 1,000 people, but they're followed for two years. And over two years, we had 190 new cases, okay?
So uh, this uh, this estimation is wrong, but the way it is uh, noted is that if there are 190 new cases, you'd be seeing that 95 uh, new cases per um, 1,000 um, people, so 9.5% over two years uh, or, or, or per year. Now the third thing which is uh, which we are interested in is to discuss a standardized morti mor morbidity or mortality ratio. And here we compare prevalence or incidence across time. But you can also compare them across populations because populations quite often have different age structures or gender uh, distribution. So therefore, you know, the, the prevalence or, or overall prevalence of a particular disease in one population may not be exactly similar to another population. So how do we know that they are, um, how different are they? And this is how we, um, this, is, this is where standardization of uh, the rate has become very important. And there are a couple of ways in which you can do that. One is indirect standardization, the other is direct standardization. So we will take a look at both uh, examples of both of them. In indirect standardization, we take each specific rates of both populations. However, we only need to have the age specific population structure for only one population. So we multiply each specific rate of population, say population A, to the age specific population uh, of B. So which means age specific rate of a particular disease of population A is multiplied with the same band for the age specific population of B. And we get the, in this way the expected count for B. So if you wanted to compare population A with population B, we would get the expected counts for B, we sum them up together, and then we um, compare them with the observed count for B, and we get the um, standardized mortality or morbidity ratio using observed versus expected count. We'll see in an example. In a direct standardization, we use a standardized population, which is known as the SEGI or the world population. And then what we do is this, that we directly head to head compare the two populations by multiplying the age specific rates with the age specific population um, which is the standard population here and then again we compare the two to get the standardized morbidity or mortality ratio here is an example this example shows you indirect standardization in this particular case we were studying the age specific rate for hypertension which is treated hypertension in new zealand from the new zealand health survey we got the um, age specific prevalence of um, hypertension that is treated hypertension for 2012 and 2009. So 0.5% for example shows you the age specific um, treated hypertension for the age group 15 to 24 and population 2012 that is 3000 shows you the age specific population for the age band 15 to 24. Now the expected count or the observed count for 2012 is 15 because 0.5 times 3 um, four percentage gives us gives us 15 and you can do the math for yourself so these are the observed counts that we get to get to see for the year 2012 if we were to put the um, age specific rate for 2009 uh, treated hypertension onto the population of 2012 then that would give us a an expected rate of um, expected count for um, for 2012. What is the expectation? The expectation is this, that if the rates of, um, if the prevalence of hypertension or treated hypertension in 2009 were to remain unchanged, then in 2012, we would be seeing six cases of, um, of um, treated hypertension in the age group of 15 to 24, but we do get to see 15 of them. So you can see that there are some variabilities and then some variations. However, we add them up and then we get the expected count of 184827, which is the expected count if 2009 rates would be unchanged and carried over to 2012. And, um, our, uh, you know, as we construct a ratio of observed counts versus expected count, we get a standardized morbidity ratio for um, treated hypertension in New Zealand about 1.08. It's not a big deal, but you can still see that the um, that hypertension have increased. And uh, you can see that there are certain age groups in which the hypertension has particularly increased, for example, in case of um, 15 to 24. But for the other ages, age groups, you can see that they're not really uh, changed that much. There's some 
um, they have registered changes like the extremely old uh, age, 75 plus, etc. And lastly, um, I would like to show you another uh, example, but this time it's a direct standardization. Pardon me for the spelling error. And you can see that the direct standardization, again, we get to see this time we use the SEGI population, which is or the SEGI population, which is um, a, a standardized world population. And what we do here is this, that we take the prevalence of each of these years and then we uh, put them into, um, into there. And you can see that once more, the pattern is quite clear that in 2012, there were more cases of hypertension. The rates would be higher and you can see that the standardized morbidity ratio is 1.08. So this completes our um, first module. That is, we learned about um, the definition of epidemiology. We learned about how do we measure the distribution of diseases and we learned how do we measure about the um, about uh, three concepts. We learned about prevalence, incidence, and standardized um, rates, ratios. Thank you very much for your attention. In the next lecture, we shall learn a little bit about um, the, um, about, uh, and in, the, in subsequent lectures, we'll learn uh, about other issues. Thank you.